Hi, my name is Bramus, Chrome Developer Relations Engineer here at Google, and this is Unleash the Power of Scroll-Driven Animations. In the previous episodes, I showed you how to create scroll-driven animations using either a scroll timeline or a view timeline, and how to attach to only a part of their normal range. To do that, I relied on anonymous timelines in CSS which only look up the ancestor tree to find the relevant scroll container. In this episode, I'll show you how you can attach an animation to any scroll container on the page without that scroller needing to be an ancestor of the animated element. For this, I'll introduce you to the concept of named timelines and the timeline scope property. Before I dive into the concept of named timelines, let's take a look first at how the timeline lookup mechanism works. Whenever you create a scroll timeline using the scroll function, you create an anonymous scroll timeline that, by default, starts tracking the nearest ancestor scroll container in the block direction. To find this nearest scroll container, the CSS engine walks up the containing blockchain until it finds the first element that matches. In this example here, the root scroller is the element that's being used. A tricky situation that you might run into, and I have more than once, is that even though your animation code is correct and there is an ancestor scroller, the scroll-driven animation doesn't really seem to do anything. Here's the code. It's the same as before, but now the intermediate element has overflow hidden applied to it. And that's what's causing the issue here. Nearest matches that intermediary element. The way overflow hidden works is that not only it clips the contents that overflow, it also creates a scroll container. Even though the browser doesn't show a scroll bar for these, you can scroll it programmatically by changing the scroll offset through JavaScript or calling methods like scroll into view. Thankfully, the solution to this problem is very straightforward. Instead of setting overflow to hidden, set it to clip instead. Overflow wise, the outcome is the same. Overflow gets clipped. The key difference though, is that overflow clip doesn't create a scroll container. And that way, the timeline lookup mechanism will skip over the clipped element while searching for the nearest ancestor scroll container. Here's a demo that shows both hidden and clip adjacent to each other. On the left, the blue box has overflow hidden applied to it, and on the right, overflow clip. Check the link shown on screen to read up on this behavior. I see no reason to use overflow hidden at all nowadays, unless you explicitly want to create a scroll container. As a best practice, use overflow clip by default. It has the same result, has great browser support, and also allows you to set an overflow clip margin. Another thing you might run into is that even though the scroll container is a parent element of the element that needs to animate, the lookup for nearest somehow can't seem to find it. Check out this example, where the progress indicator doesn't update as I scroll. And no, there is no overflow hidden at play here. Even stronger, the progress indicator is a direct child of the scroll container. Weird, right? The reason why this doesn't work is that the timeline lookup mechanism walks up the containing blockchain. Because the progress indicator is absolutely positioned, its containing block is the wrapper element which has position relative on it not the scroll container that sits in between both. So scroll inline nearest can never match that scroll container. To fix this, there is an alternative way to create a scroll timeline. Instead of creating an anonymous one, you can create a named one and refer to that name in the animation timeline property. Here's what this looks like in code. On the scroller, use the scroll timeline name property to create a scroll timeline with that name. The value must be a dashed ident, which starts with two dashes. Because the scroller scrolls in the inline direction, set the scroll timeline axis to inline. There is also a shorthand you can use, the scroll timeline property. It accepts both the name and an axis. And if you omit the axis, it defaults to block. With that named scroll timeline created on the gallery scroll container element, you can use it as a value for the animation timeline property on any child of that element. This works because named timeline lookups don't walk up the containing blockchain to find a match. Instead, it simply walks up the good old DOM tree with the nearest parent element that declares that name being the winner. And like that, the demo now works fine. As I scroll, the progress indicator animates in direct response. Great. Yes, 
This dashed ident for scroll timeline name looks a lot like a custom property. While they do share the same syntax, namely starting with two dashes, it's a custom identifier that you create. To refer to it, you don't need the var function because it's not a custom property. You can use the value directly. Creating a named timeline also works for view timelines. Instead of using the scroll timeline prefix properties, you use the view timeline prefix for Ryan's for this. There are the view timeline name, view timeline axis, and also view timeline inset properties that you can use. The name property takes a dashed ident and the other ones take the same values as the parameters for the view function. There is also the view timeline shorthand to declare it all in one go. A practical example is this cover flow recreation that has a list of album covers. As each album cover crosses the scroll port, it rotates so that the center one is facing you. The markup for this is an unordered list that holds an image. Nothing really fancy there. As for the keyframes, each image element gets rotated as it crosses the scroll port. At the edges of the keyframes, they are rotated sideways, but at the 50% mark, they are facing forwards. To make sure the center cover is the frontmost one, the Z index on the LI elements themselves also changes. While I could create an anonymous view timeline for each image and each LI element separately by setting their animation timeline to view inline, I opted to create only one named timeline on the LI element and then have both the LI and the image elements use it as their animation timeline. Yes, that's right. The animated element does not need to be the subject that is tracked as it crosses the scroll port. That's amazing. One point to note in this cover flow demo is when a cover gets rotated in 3D, its get bound and climbing rack changes. Yet somehow the range of the view timeline is not affected by this. That is because the range of a view timeline is computed using the untransformed principle box. That is, the box before transforms are applied to it. You can see it in action in this recording right here, where the blue outlines are the untransformed principle box. You can safely rotate, scale, or translate an element without needing to worry about the view timeline's range. When creating a named timeline on a scroll container, its name is only visible to the children of that scroll container. In both the carousel step indicator and the cover flow examples, this was the case. The elements that get animated are all children of the scroll container. But what if the animated element is not a child of the scroll container for whatever reason? Or what if you explicitly want to track an element way at the other end of the DOM tree? Well, that's where timeline scope comes into play. You use this property on a shared parent of both the animated subject and the scroll container. By using timeline scope, you are only declaring the name, effectively giving it a much broader scope. Here's an example of carousel indicator markers. As I scroll to the next view, the corresponding marker gets highlighted. The markers here are no child of the scroll container. To allow the dots to find the timeline created on the scroll container, timeline scope is used on one of their shared ancestors. Note that the timeline scope property accepts a comma separated list. That way you can host up more than one named timeline. In a future release of Chrome, you'll be able to use the all keyword to automatically pull up all contained named timelines. Congratulations. You've just finished the last video of the core concepts of scroll-driven animations. But wait, this was not the last video of this series. In the next few videos, I'll go over some practical demos and dissect them. See you there.